All right, stand up on your feet all over the room. It's going to be a great night. People are still coming in. I know it's a rainy night out there. Listen, I'm praying for a rainy night in here. How many of you are ready for that? Let it rain on the outside, but Lord, by all means, let it rain on the inside tonight. Praise the Lord. Well, it's going to be a great night. I was talking with, uh, with Lyndall and the band and all the singers, and they said, listen, we've come for one reason tonight, and that is to worship. We haven't come to be seen. We're not here because of anybody else is here. We have come for one reason, and that is to worship. How many of you have come for that very same reason tonight? Only one reason. We have come to worship the Lord, to lift up the Lord. We have come to bless his name. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been over to the Global Prayer Center on Thursdays. Lift your hand if you've ever been there. All right, a lot of you. Listen, sometimes we have almost 200 people that show up there. Many times we have around 200 people that show up for prayer. And uh, you'll know if you've come lately, we like to start with the Lord's Prayer. And the reason we do that is because the beginning of the Lord's Prayer is hallowed be thy name. And we begin our prayer time with just a time of praising God and thanking Him and glorifying Him. So this is how I want to start tonight. Before we sing anything, I want you to say this prayer with me. And then we're going to lift up our hands all over this room. This is what tonight is about. It is a night of worship. We're not here. With, there, there's not, I'm not going to promise there won't be any preaching. But I'll tell you, there's no planned preaching tonight. But you never know when Lyndall Cooley's in the house because uh, Lyndall is a preacher. And uh, so you never know what he's going to do. But that is the plan tonight is just come before the Lord and worship. And I want you to get free. I just want you to worship God. I want you to feel comfortable worshiping the Lord. So right now, I want you to just say the Lord's Prayer with me. Let's begin this night by saying that together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Now I want you to do something with me. If you believe that prayer and if you believe that Christ taught us to start out our prayer and our time with him with hallowed be thy name, for the next few minutes, I want you to lift up your hands all over this room and I just want you to tell God how good he's been to you and I just want you to just brag on him for a moment right now from your heart. Just thank God for his goodness. Doesn't matter what else is going on in your life. You can see the evidence of the goodness of God all around you. Hallelujah. Father, we see the evidence of your goodness. God, in the midst of everything, we see the evidence of your goodness. God, in the midst of trial and temptation, the evidence of your goodness. In the midst of battle and despair, the evidence of your goodness is everywhere. God, we thank you, God, because you're our healer. You are our savior. You are our baptizer. You are our redeemer. You are our defender. Oh, God, we praise you, God. There is none like you in all the earth. We glorify you and we magnify you you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Jireh, the one who sees and provides. You are Jehovah Roe, the one who heals our body, the shepherd of our life, Jehovah Rophe. God, you are the one, oh God, the righteousness of God, Jehovah Sidkenu. You are the great creator, Adonai. We love you. We praise you, God. We glorify your name, Father. God, we want to thank you, God, because you never change. In a changing world, we can do depend upon you in a world that is sw that is swirling in change and confusion there is one rock that we can go to so lead me to the rock that is higher than I lead me to the rock of ages that will strengthen and comfort us in every circumstance of life we glorify you and we bless your name and we thank you God that you've gathered us here tonight as a great night of worship you've gathered us here tonight Night, Lord, that we can lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting and bless your name. We bless you and we praise you for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your love, your everlasting grace, and the fact that great is your faithfulness and your mercies are renewed every day. We bless you, Lord, and we glorify.
magnify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now can you put your hands together right now and just thank God for His goodness in your life. Come on, if God has been good to you, just thank Him for your, His goodness in your life. I don't know how many worshipers I have in the house tonight. How many of you have come to worship? How many have got energy to worship? You've got desire to worship. You've got passion to worship. Anybody want an encounter with God unlike any you've ever had before? Well, tonight is your night. Say this with me. Lord, let the glory come. Lord, let the glory come. Lord, fill this room with your Shekinah glory tonight. Let the glory come. Manifest yourself tonight, oh God. Let the glory of God come. And we bless you and we praise you. Hallelujah. One more time, put your hands together as Pastor Lindo Cooley and these amazing singers and band come and lead us into God's presence tonight. We glorify you, Lord. Before we start, do you want to just go ahead and get out of your seat? Because um, you know, I don't really want you to be in your seat unless you're old. If you're old like me, you need a seat, okay? But if you're some of these young guys and girls, you need to get up here and we need to dance and we need to worship. We just need to go. And if you're, if you're, if you're old like me and you can still move it, then get out of the seat and let's go. I mean, amen. We're no, we, we don't... Discriminate against any age, just whatever it takes. I think sometimes when we come into these kind of meetings and we're unfamiliar, you know, you go, I I'd worship if I knew the song. Well, actually, you wouldn't. Because the song is not even important. It's simply a tool. If you don't know the song, who cares? Worship. The idea of worship I have is when you come so prepared with your offering to minister to the Lord. See, you're invited tonight to do something that is not about you, not for you, not to you. You're not even involved except for your hands, your voice, and your spirit. Do you know that? We've come to entertain and minister to the Lord. And I long for the day when a group of people are so prepared to go that there's none of this looking around stuff. It's just go, and then you're so loud we have to quit playing because you're singing a different song than us, and we follow you. Remember, we start it, you're supposed to finish it. Okay? Now, where's the best place to start worship? Well, let's see. Let me think. Remembering where you were when Jesus found you. There's nothing like an altar. And I pray to the Lord you haven't been in church so long you forgot what a heathen you were when Jesus found you. When I start to worship the Lord, I start thinking about my cousin sitting on the organ over there. Our grandfather was a bootlegger, a fiddle player from southeast Missouri, never held down a good job except to be a, chair, a sharecropper. And when my mother was 11 years old, she walked into an Assembly of God church in Kula, Missouri, and got saved. She got so saved that she led her mother and father to Jesus. She got so saved that she led her brothers and sisters to Jesus. And God at that moment made a mark in my family that I would not be here today if it weren't for my mother getting saved when she was 11. So excuse me if I'm not religious about that, and excuse me if I don't need to warm up. <laughs> Say this with me. I'm saved, I'm saved. By, the by the blood of the Lamb, not by works, not by works. but by faith. by faith, by the blood. By the blood. Now, how many got a snapshot of where God brought you out of? You got one? You got one? Now lift up a shout to God right now. Let's go. I was blinded by the devil, born already ruined. Stone cold dead head as I stepped out of the womb. By his grace I have been touched, by his word I have been healed. With his hand I've been delivered, by his spirit I am sealed. Blood of the 
Upright. By his strength I do endure By his power I've been lifted In his love I am secure Cause he bought me with a price Freed me from the pit Filled with emptiness and wrath And a fire in the past And I'm saved By the blood of the Lamb Come on, shout it, say it Say By the blood of the Lamb Say it, say it. Drinking buddies weren't your buddies anymore when you stopped drinking, were they? All your smoking buddies weren't your buddies anymore when you stopped smoking with them. You know that? Nobody knows how low I was when Jesus found me. Nobody knows how dark it was when Jesus saved me. Nobody knows how far down I was when Jesus found me. He reached way down and delivered me. He set my feet upon a rock. Upon a he turned me around. He said, My feet are on a rock. He turned me around. Hey, hey. Nobody rescued me. Nobody dared. I was going down for the last time. But by his mercy, I'm spared. Not by works, by faith in him who called somebody. For so long, I'm in him.
children Because the angels in heaven, the angels in heaven, I once was lost, but now I've found the angels in heaven. Took a pen, dipped it in the blood of the lamb, and wrote me a brand new name I've never seen before, I'm gonna see someday. Y'all came to be religious, I didn't come to be religious. I was lost and undone. I didn't have Jesus. I didn't have his name. I didn't have his blood. But tonight I'm standing before you. Blood bought, healed, saved, and delivered. Blood bought, healed, saved. I wish the redeemed of the Lord would say so. Y'all feel you are you feel you through looking? Let's go, come on.
can hear the wind blowing. Yes. Blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing. Lord, purify our hearts. Lord, we repent because our hearts have not really been wholly yours. We've had other loves, Lord. We've had other things. We've even worshiped worship. But it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Come down, come down, come down as we worship you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. All about you, Jesus.
sitting here for my life it's changed when the water stir you can rearrange me just one touch is all I need I have nothing much but the wounds I feel I've come to find the hand of the miracle maker
Opened my eyes to see A wonderful mystery Of love Starting in with you I'm drawn to the gravity Of love Standing still in a moment of eternity where worlds collide, and I feel the breath of heaven over me. My soul sings, my soul.
We're standing still in a moment of eternity where worlds collide and I feel the breath of heaven on me my soul sings my soul sings my soul How I love you, my soul sings, my soul, Jesus, 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 I love you. I don't know the words that I want to sing. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the Father. Sing with 
love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I really don't deserve you, Jesus. I know my heart, Lord, and I really don't deserve you, but I sure love you. I sure love you. And I'd rather have you than anything. And I wish in this room tonight you would help everybody take off their religious mask pretending they're okay because we're all broken we're all broken and we need you Jesus there'll never be a day we don't need you there'll never be a time we don't need you here instead of lookers for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be
intend to do this, but I'm going to. Kenny, stay with me on the keyboard or something. I don't know. Hi, Cheyenne. See, it's possible to stand in Cleveland, Tennessee and be far removed from what Jesus has done for your life. It's possible to know all the songs and wait for the next emotional release. But your emotions aren't worship. It's your heart. He wants your heart. He doesn't need your praise. He wants your heart. He's not deficit of anything. you play that keyboard? Just play the keyboard. Can you, is it on? Just play the keyboard. Don't play anything just yet, Ken. If you're standing, just sit in the floor. Isaac, come up here. Sam, get ready for a broken heart. I wasn't going to do this, but I think it's going to help us worship. Is that okay, Pastor Brian? Is it okay? Revelation came to me recently that has changed my life. I know a lot of people say this will change your life, and it doesn't, okay? But this changed my life, and I thought I was pretty changed. But this changed my life. Adam and Eve in the garden were in a perfect environment. Anybody listening? They were in a perfect environment. Nothing was wrong. They fellowship with the Father every single day. There were only two voices in the garden. The voice of man, Adam and Eve, and the voice of God. They knew the voice of God. They knew what he sounded like. They knew. When he said, Adam, they answered, 
Yes, Lord. They knew him. They knew the timbre and the timbre of his voice. They knew. They knew when he spoke, they knew who it was because there was only two voices. The voice of mankind and the voice of God. There was no confusion. There was nobody unsure of what they were hearing until we get to chapter 3. And the serpent from the tree begins, or the serpent begins to speak. And from the moment he opens his mouth, he becomes the third voice. What's this have relevance with worship? Oh, a lot. The third voice started to speak. And when the third voice started to speak, I want to show you something. I don't have time to give you the passages. But if you have the King James Version, it says in chapter 3, verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord in the garden, okay? But do you know what? That is the only translation that, that I'm finding out of ASV, NIV, um, Amplified, NASB, e, e, uh, English Standard, ESV. None of the rest say voice. Do you know what they say? Sound. They heard the sound of the Lord. And the voice that used to comfort them is now a noise. It's a sound, it's not a voice. They heard the sound of the Lord and Adam says to God, we heard the sound of you in the garden and we were afraid and we hid ourselves. And God said, have you eaten of what the tree I told you not to? See, more happened with the eating of that fruit than just the loss of dominion. They lost the ability to hear the voice of God. They couldn't hear him clearly because the third voice confused. When the third voice starts talking, when Lucifer starts speaking, he brings confusion. And if you think he isn't in this service talking to some people right now, I don't know where you came in from. Because he's in this room and as you begin to worship the Lord, he says things like, you've heard this song before. You're tired. You've got to hurry and get home. Third voice. Let me tell you another thing the third voice brought. Double-mindedness. There was never a double-mindedness until the third voice talked. What, is the, what does James say about the third voice? Or, or about double-mindedness? He said, a double-minded man ought not to think he'll receive anything from the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. The devil knows that when he speaks that third voice... And he can confuse the sound of God's voice. He can make you double-minded. What's the result of that? Well, let me show you. When Jesus, in one of the Gospels, they said they heard the voice of God. Jesus heard the voice of his Father. But those round about heard thunder. Why did Jesus hear a voice and everybody else heard noise? Because Jesus said, I don't say anything except what my Father says. I only hear his voice. I am single-minded. I am not unsure. Somebody says, well, Jesus didn't understand. Oh, no, no, no. In the temptation of 40 days and 40 nights, Lucifer tried the same thing that he tried on the first Adam and won, and he didn't get it done with the second Adam because Jesus kept saying, no. Someone who wants to confuse you never comes with a counterpoint that would rear you up. They come with a question. Did God really say? Did God really say? If you're the son of God, cast yourself down from this temple. If you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. If. What does that have to do with worship? Everything. 
Because the minute we come together and we make an announcement of having a song service or a worship service, the devil gets right here. So you won't engage. And you're engaging fine. Most of you. But the Lord told me, he said, stop and tell them about the third voice. Because some of you came here tonight and you're desperate to hear the voice of the Lord. Until you bind that third voice and tell it to shut up. In the name of Jesus, you won't hear a clear word. You'll just hear a noise. We didn't come tonight by the invitation of Pastor Re uh, Brian to, to make a noise. We came to open the heavens with our praise, and you open the heavens with your praise and your worship so that you can hear a clear voice. How many need a word from the Lord? Well, let me tell you something. He's talking, but the third voice has got you muted where all you hear is noise. He never stops talking. He never stops. He's always speaking. We can't hear him because we're listening to the thing on our shoulder talking to us and telling us, you didn't really get saved. You're not really holy. You didn't really get the Holy Ghost. Those tongues you spoke in weren't really Holy Ghost tongues. That's all a lie. This is just a bunch of hooey. You need to get home because you're tired. You've got to go to work in the morning. you got stuff to do. You, you need to, third voice. And you know what I realized in this revelation to my life? I realized that the third voice has won out so many times in my life. And I've realized that I don't have to put up with the third voice anymore. I don't have to put up with it anymore. We're going to worship a few more minutes. I'm going to do something really weird. Okay? Because normally I would just, uh, uh, y'all know how I usually lead worship. I don't usually do it like this. But I feel like you need to understand that you're not alone in what you're going through. I think you need to understand that just because we're standing on the stage doesn't mean we're not going through. You need to understand that the voice telling you that if God really loved you, you wouldn't be going through trouble. I think you need to understand that the things that you used to hunger for God, you used to hunger for them, and the third voice has talked you out of them. Oh, you've come to the altar before. You've asked the Lord before. It didn't happen. Why would you think it'll happen? It happens for them. It's a bunch of hype. Your professors in your colleges are telling you there is no God. We're so confused in this nation, we don't even know what a woman and a man is anymore. It's confusing, confusing. Third voice is talking, 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 talking. That's not a political statement. That's a third voice statement. We got churches splitting. I mean, this is the, this is the queen mother of every church split that could possibly happen, Cleveland, Tennessee. Y'all have got splits of splits of splits of splits, and they're a result of a third voice talking. And I'm telling you, friends, what's about to happen on the earth, the Lord says, it's time to get your mask off and quit your fake religion. The Lord says, I'm not going to have any more of it. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm done with you acting like you're okay and not letting yourself come apart. Let me tell you, it's time to come apart in the presence of our Father because our Father knows how to put us back together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I came tonight to see some people get put back together. I came to see heaven kiss this place so that you're transformed and changed. And I'm going to ask Samuel, I'm going to put Samuel in a really bad spot. My son, this is my son. This is Isaac, in whom I'm well pleased. Son, just... Briefly tell them, and I, I'm going to lead into a song, and then we're just going to worship our socks off. Will you tell them a little bit what the Lord has done for you? Yeah. So I, I uh, went through a lot of rebellion, and the, Lord, the devil telling me, getting in my brain, telling me that um, your parents are just scared, and, and they'll do whatever it takes to keep you around, and they'll, just, they'll lie to you and... I got to the point where, like, I didn't know what to believe anymore, and I listened to that third voice for so long, and I didn't, I questioned the Lord sometimes, and I moved out, and I was gone for about, 
how long was I gone for? A month and a half or so. I was gone for a good long time. And uh, we didn't know where he was. And all, the whole time I was out there, the Lord always worked on my worked on me and just told me, you know, like I, every time I would get at my darkest, he would always let me know in a way he was still there. And I always wonder, I'm like, why? Because like I'm, I didn't say I, I wouldn't say I've turned away from the Lord, but I wasn't living for him and I wasn't doing anything for him. And I just I always thought, why? Like, why do you still care? Like, what? I've done so much wrong. And finally, my mom was in the closet praying like crazy for me. And uh, I believe I believe that's what brought me home. And I just I felt like it was a it was just better to be home. And I came home and live with my parents now, and life's great. <laughs> No. Come on. Hallelujah. And my dear friend Cheyenne Eakin is here, and they've got the most wonderful church in Bellevue called Eyes on Jesus. I love them, and y'all were so instrumental in that boy turning around. Cheyenne's got glory all over her. She is a wreck for Jesus. Why am I doing this in the middle of worship service? Because I'm in charge and I can do whatever I want. While he was gone, one night a demon came into my room, stood in the corner by the door of our bedroom that goes outside and started talking to me. Last year, I was infirmed and I was five and a half months off my feet on a, it, in crutches when I had to walk. I was down. I didn't know what was wrong. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. With my body, it wouldn't work. I did everything I knew to do to fix it, but it wouldn't work. Hmm. I know if you're a faith person, I'm going to knock your faith in the head. I don't care. It's time to quit being plastic. Bad things happen to good people. It just does. Let's just finally admit that one. And I was infirmed, and my son left home on Father's Day. Father's Day is a special day for me because it's the day revival started. It was interesting that on Father's Day, my son left home. And me and his mother didn't know where he was. And that voice out of the corner when I was at my worst and my lowest started talking to me and he said, you led worship for millions of people and you've preached the gospel and you've watched hundreds of thousands walk the aisle and get saved. But I've got your son. I came right into your home and I took him. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. I'm going to kill him. I don't care how bad my feet were. I came out of that bed. I lunged across that room. And I went all Pentecostal on the devil. You lying, foul demon from hell. In the name of Jesus, you're going to let my boy go. The blood of Jesus is against you. The name of Jesus, you're going to let him go. And you're going to turn him around. And you're not going to harm him. Get out of my house. I opened the door. And I escorted him. And I said, anybody who came with you, go right on out the door with him. The next week, I called Isaac, and I said, son, I'm worried about your soul. You remember that call? He said, why, Papa? I said, because you're a liar. And I said, liars sear their conscience as with a hot iron, and you can't hear the Holy Ghost anymore. Lying's dangerous. It's a spirit. And you may get to the point where you can't hear the sweet voice of God. Son, turn around. He said, well, I got something to tell you, but Dad. 
He said, last night I was in my room praying. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm a liar. Help me. You guys, Sam? My wife and I and my oldest son, when he was away, would sit in our kitchen and cry. And we'd listen to songs about prodigals coming home. We'd listen to songs about prodigals coming home. This is not very Pentecostal of me right here. I looked up one day, I went to a, a, a service and I was at my worst and my son had left home. And because I'm me, I'm on crutches, I'm me, I get up to walk across the stage and 10 people line up for me to pray for them. And I thought, I ain't got nothing to pray for y'all, I got nothing. I'm broken hearted, I just got through worshiping the Lord and laying my son on the altar, his name is Isaac. And saying, God, whatever you got to do, just get him home. I'm broken to pieces. And the Holy Spirit said, you pray for these people. And Brian, when I started praying for them, I started prophesying. It was clearer than anything I've ever heard. I started reading their mail stuff there's no way I could have known. And after that service was over, the Lord says, I love brokenness. And I'm close to suffering. I love suffering because it brings you close to me. And when you decrease, I increase. Woo! Do y'all feel that in this room? You feel that whipping around in here? Oh, I feel that whipping. My, 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 my. And I said a very unpentecostal word of faith prayer. I said, thank you for the suffering. Because I feel you so near. And there was a little song that helped us get through it. Sam, you ready to sing it? Come here. I want you to sing this, and then we're just going to see what the Holy Ghost does from here on out. Okay, is that all right? How many got some suffering going on right now? How many got some suffering going on? Okay. Surrender to Jesus. He knows. <laughs> when are you going to figure out how much he loves you? And when are you going to figure out that he's not answered to fix it the way you want it fixed? It's not because he's mad at you. When are you going to realize that it's all about just changing your heart toward him? When are you going to realize that those things that come in life, even when the enemy brings them, he didn't bring the bad thing. But when the bad thing is brought by the enemy, God will turn that thing into something beautiful. Oh, he'll do it. He'll do it. I don't know why we came here tonight, but I feel like this is part of it. Are you ready, Sam? Start it. In every wound a story I have cried. You always love me. It never ends. Cause you are not an ordinary friend What I thought would take me under Has led me back to you And every time that I feel I'm falling apart I give thanks for a broken heart Thank you, Jesus You're never weary I love this Of my complaints Believe in me when I am losing faith And what is shattered You will mend Cause you are not an ordinary friend And every battle leaves us fragile And 
If you need to come right now and pour your heart out to the Lord, just get out of your seat. That's why we're here. Come on, pour it all out to Jesus. Pour it all out to Jesus. Pour it all out to Jesus.
says you came tonight for a night of worship. But I came, in, I came tonight for a night of restoration. The Lord says, I've received your worship, but I've come to restore you. I've come to heal you, and I've come to equip you. And most of all, I've come, in, I've come into this room to wake you. Wake the death sleep that has been on your spirit. I'm here to wake it. And I say, come away, my love. Come away, my love. Come away from this place, my love. Come into a chamber that's meant for you and me. Come away from fear. Come away from failure. Come away with me. Come away. Come away. For I've seen the tears that you cried years ago in worship at my altar. And I heard the words of commitment and eternal love that you've spoken to me. And the Lord says, I've come to awaken that first love again. I've come to awaken that first love. For the enemy has come to confuse, but I have come to focus you. Because what I'm about to do in the earth, you got to get close. You got to come away. Come away from the confusion. Come away from the noise. Come away from the ideas that cause your heart sorrow. Come away from the darkness. Dance in the light. Let me restore what's been stolen from you. Watch me restore what's been stolen from you. For the enemy came to take your children. He can't have them. Because I put a mark on them the day you dedicated them to me. So release them to me and trust me, says the Lord. I don't need your help, I've got this. I don't need your fear, I've got this. I don't need your worry, I've got this. All you gotta do is fall in my arms this evening. Come away, come away, come away with me. Have you forgotten what it's like to come away with me? Come away, come away, come away with me. Come away and watch the sunset with me. Come away, come away, come away with me. Come out of the darkness and the confusion that you see. Don't be moved by your fear and your emotion. Trust what I have said. I've never failed, I've never failed. I've never broken one promise to you. Everything I said to you, everything I promised you, I will do. And do you really think your vision came from you? I put it there and I will fulfill it. I put it there and I will fulfill it. But you've got to press into me. You've got to get closer and hear my voice. Hear my whisper. Come away, come away, come away with me. Come away, come away, come away with me. Lay all your burdens at my feet, come away. Lay it all down before me, come away. And we answer, Lord, we're coming for you. We're running for you. We're coming after you, Lord. We're running for you. Now, all over this room, without the help of the music, start to sing to him. 
Not because everything's perfect, but because you believe him. Begin to sing and minister to him all over this room. Come on. Let it come up out of your spirit. It's not your head singing. It's not your emotions. It's your spirit. Come on. Let the spirit be released. Oh, come on. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Come on. Release it all over this room today. Come on. Hey. Come on, let it come. It's going to be light at first, and it's going to start flowing like a river. Let it flow. Come on, you got to get the dam broke loose inside of you. Come on, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let your spirit come through your, mo your voice. Come on, let it come. Hey. Oh. Yeah. Come on, church. I'm not going to another song yet. Come on. Yay. Let your sound come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Come on. Open up your spirit. Let it come through your vocal cords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, girl. Sing. I trust you without knowing where. Come on, sing with her. Sing with her. Sing with her. Sing with her. I trust you without knowing where I'm going. I trust you without knowing where I'm going. I trust you to lead. I trust, trust you with you all of me. I trust you without knowing where I'm going. I trust you without knowing where I'm going. I trust you without knowing where I'm going. I trust <laughs> Come on, release it. where you lead. Come on, you got to release it. Release it. Release your song. Come on. I trust you with all of me. <laughs> yeah. I trust when I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love you. Jesus, I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. me. 
Calling for return. Amber, mark your people. Mark your people yeah. with your praise. Make us a place. Make us a place where you desire to dwell. May. And may we feed your hands correction. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, our shepherd, you do all.
to him right now. That's our prayer, Jesus. Oh, make us holy like you are. You said without holiness, no man will see you. Make us holy like you. Make us holy like you. Take these filthy rags and make them new, make them new, make them new. We want to look like you. We want to act like you. We want to smell like you. We want to do what you do. Oh, we come up high, Lord. We come up high, Lord. Out of the dirt, out of the pig pen. We're coming higher to see your face. We're coming higher, Lord. want to be like. in charge here, but man, did everybody respond as you should? I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, the places that I haven't surrendered, help me to surrender them. I want to look like you. I want to act like you. I want to be like you. Change me. Restore me. Prepare me for the days ahead because I believe you're soon to return and I want to be a bride with a clean dress and a gaze only for you and a love only for you I don't want to have other lovers I just want you I don't want anybody but you so I focus my eyes on your face. I don't seek your hand. I seek your face because you're beautiful. I love you. I surrender everything. It's all yours. For you, Jesus. For you, Jesus. For you. Oh, Lord. You're beautiful. Your face is all I see. Oh, when 
your eyes are on this child. Your grace abounds to me. And Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear. Renew the flame of my first love that burned with holy fear. I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first help me just to live it, Lord. My favorite line. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown. For my reward is given glory to you. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all.
now. Sing it like you mean it. Don't play with it. Declare it to the heaven. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Mm, great is the Lord, great is the Lord, great is the Lord. My, my, my. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. I know we're supposed to take a break, Pastor Brian. Don't anybody leave. Can I, can I just prophesy just for a minute and then... We'll, we'll, I don't know what time we're supposed to go home, but don't care. Um, I drove further than anybody else. You know what I love about revival? No time restrictions. Everything, 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 everything got to bow down. Everything, 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 everything got to bow down. Everybody say, everything, 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 everything got to bow down. Come on, declare it. Come on. Everything. the devil has made for people about to come loose. I see the Lord walking into the jail right now. He's walking into the fear. He's walking into the addiction right now. All those secret chains have been holding people back. I see God coming in. Mm. He's beginning to move. And he's putting his hand through the bars to move the key. I can hear the latch beginning to turn loose. Cause when the Son of God walks in, Satan gotta turn loose. I can feel the latches beginning to shake. I can feel the walls beginning to shake. I can see the doors coming home. I'm telling you, perversion is breaking. Addiction is breaking. 
bar right now, we send the Spirit of the Lord to turn loose our children, our sons and daughters. Feel men shake. because Jesus is the one. It's time for some of you old Pentecostals to get your Holy Ghost dance back. It's time for the walls to begin to vibrate with the sound of the roar of the tribe of Judah. to the enemy's camp and I took back my son <laughs> getting a good B3 key is a B flat better Somebody said, he hyping us. No, I ain't hyping you. You can't work up anything yet and pray down. I'm here to declare, fat lady hadn't sang yet. I'm not turning loose of revival in this nation just because the people are confused, just because gas prices are high, yeah. just because inflation is in trouble. I'm not turning loose to see God do something. I'm believing for God to do something because I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. To the enemy's camp, took back what it stole from me under my feet, under 
Under my feet 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 Yeah, he is under my feet Nothing can stand against him. He's a great God. He's a great God. Nothing can stand before him. Nothing can stand against him. He's a great God. He's a great God. Nothing can stand before him. Nothing can stand against him. He's a great God. He's a great God. Nothing can stand before him. Nothing can stand against him. He's a great God. Has done 
and greater still he will do. He's great. He's great. He's great. Lift up your head, O oh, your gates, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. For the battle is the Lord's. Oh, he's a good God. He's been good all my life. And Father, I turn this meeting over to our pastor, but before I do, I want to thank you that I used to make fun of Pentecostals who did this because I got too snotty-headed snotty and big-headed, and it was just emotion. But I'm telling you, Father, whenever the people get out of the gear of emotion and they start dancing a holy dance, their footsteps will thunder in hell. Because the Lord says, when my bride starts to dance, Amen. she signals my coming. Because now she's outside of what's comfortable for her. And she's right in the zone of real worshipers like David. <laughs> and we'll dance on the streets that are golden. The glorious bride and the great son of man Every tribe, tongue, and nation will join us In the song of the Lamb And we will dance on the streets that are golden The glorious bride and the great son of man There's a shield in our hand and a sword at our side. There's a fire in our spirit that cannot be denied. As the Father has told us, for these you have died. For the nations that gather before you.
it again. Keep the drums going. We did it wrong. The words weren't there. Ready? Top of the chorus. Y'all going to yell, hail the lamb. Write it like he's coming right now. You ready? And the angels will cry. Come on. Hail the lamb. <laughs> yeah. Who was slain for the world. Rule. Rule and power. And the earth will reply. And the earth will reply. You. I don't know what you want me to do with this. This is God's. This, is not, this doesn't belong to anybody but him. Let's just lift our hands one more time and bless his name. We glorify you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Listen, I want you guys to get another couple of songs together right before we go home. We're going to take just a really about three-minute break here. We're going to receive our offering. How many of you would love to have them back sometime? All right, how many of you want to send them home blessed also? So I want to give you an opportunity. I would not rob you from this great opportunity of sowing into what God has done tonight, not only in this room, but in your life and all of you online. I want to give you an opportunity. So we're going to do this real quick. I'm going to ask the ushers to come, and then we're just going to go right back into a couple more songs of worship before we leave. So if our ushers could help us real fast, I want to give you an opportunity just to sow into what God has done in your life and for those of you online, there are ways that you can give. You can look at the links online or the QR code that online. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, while our ushers are getting ready, and while you're getting ready, if you want to text to give, here's the information right on the screen. Just tap, just text RAMP OCI to this number. And for those of you that give uh, on that every week, thank you so much. Uh, some like me, I'm, I give reoccurring every week on my phone, and I know that many of you do the same. Thank you for that. Thank you for your generosity tonight. And I just want to say, you know, we would love, how many of you would, come on, let me just hear you one more time. How many of you would love to have Lyndall Cooley and all the team come back for another night of worship real soon? Man, man, I would too. I would love that. By the way, here's a bit of trivia for you. Some of you guys don't know this. This guy on the organ used to play the organ at my church when I was a pastor in St. Louis. So we've known Kenny Penn forever. We've known him for a long time. He said, I don't even, I mean, what'd you say? We're old. We're old, that's what he said. Actually, he played in the early days when we first went there. So we were there for almost 30 years. And um, he played in the early days when we, actually, we'd probably been there three or four years. And he started playing uh, the organ for us. It was an amazing time. Just a dear friend. There's another dear friend that I have to mention tonight because uh, Kenny, I mean, um, Lindell said he drove the, the furthest, but he actually didn't. We have someone who came here all the way from El Salvador, and um, there is a missionary that's here tonight. And when missionaries are among us, I think that's the royalty of the, home, of the house. 
This, this lady, let me tell you real quick about her. She was a member of our church in St. Louis when we were pastoring there. She was a brilliant scientist working for Washington University, and she was working on discoveries for cancer and all kinds of things. And she went on a mission trip, and the Lord just wrecked her life. She gave up her entire career in science and went to El Salvador to, to rescue battered women women that were being abused, and that led into a greater ministry. She now works among the most fears, the most feared gangs in all of, of, of uh, Central and South America, and she is like Mother Teresa to them. There's probably only one white woman that can walk the streets of El Salvador any time of the night and doesn't have to fear anything because the gangs protect her because she feeds their children. She takes care of their family. She wins them to the Lord. Whenever, she's got one of, the, one of the greatest ministries you've ever seen there, feeding programs, medical programs. She takes care of them and they take care of her. And because of that, she's winning their children to the Lord, which is turning fathers and mothers to the Lord. She's one of the only women I know that's tough enough to go into the feared El Salvadorian prisons and preach the gospel in a place that most people would, would be terrified to go into. But Janice goes in there and preaches the gospel. Janice, please stand tonight. Let us just welcome you tonight. She, she is here in the U.S. and she just drove here to be a part of this service tonight. We're so glad to have you. We're so honored to have you. If you want to know a missionary that's the real deal, she's the real deal. She's on the front lines every day. She doesn't live here. She lives in El Salvador, but she just happens to be here just on, uh, just taking a little break. She was staying in a cabin on the mountains. She saw her advertisement, said, Pastor B, I got to come down. That's what she calls me. That's what she's called me ever since she's known me. And she said, uh, we want to come down. I just got to come down and be with some real people. She's been in the woods seeking God. She said, I've been, I've been, I've been here with deers and elks worshiping. I just want to worship with some real people and, and, that, and people that can speak English too because that's not something she gets to do very often anymore in El Salvador. So we are great. we're so grateful to have you tonight. Stand, I, I told you you're getting a short break. Stand up one more time. We're going to go ahead and bring your offering. Then I, w I don't want you to leave because we're going to worship a little bit more and we're going to send you home with joy tonight. So Lord, thank you for this great offering. Thank you for these wonderful people. I pray God that you will bless and keep us. Let your grace shine upon us. Lord, let your face shine down upon us tonight. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Don't miss a moment to sow into this, into this healing and the restoration, everything that God has done tonight. Come and give as they, uh, as they play, and then we're going to give you a couple quick announcements, and they're going to sing again. I don't know how much more singing I can do, but let me say this. Um, can we do one more? I think I've got enough to, to blow one more, I think. But Okay, and one thing I want to ask you, too, while you're bringing your offering, is back in the back, I've got about 40 bags of the best coffee in Tennessee. Roasted right here in our state at Oak Hill Farm Coffee Roasters on my farm in Columbia, Tennessee. So I only got about 40 bags with me. I promise you, it's the best coffee you'll have. It is amazing, and actually. it helps us do the work of the ministry. So please, Amen. don't let us take it home. We need you to take it home, all right? And for all of you coffee connoisseurs like me, I can tell you firsthand, it is amazing coffee. It really is. The best you'll find in this area. All right. Thank you so much for your giving. Thank you, ushers. We have a couple of things that we want to make you aware of for next week because next week we're going to have Holy Communion. Next week is our time that we're going to do an, a celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Look at the screens for about two minutes, and then we're going to go right back into our final songs of worship. Hey, Ram Cleveland. We are so excited that you guys are in the house tonight. We are blessed and honored to have Linda Cooley doing a night of worship tonight. Uh, so once again, we want to welcome you to the Ramp at OCI, and let's get to your announcements. This weekend is Women's Ramp, so if you're looking to volunteer and help serve the house, we're going to have opportunities tomorrow at 9 a.m. if you're part of the chair team to help set up chairs, and 11 a.m. for the cleaning team. So please come on out, get involved, get part of the, what God's going to do here at OCI, and we want you to help out. We want to see you tomorrow morning.
Next Tuesday, we're gonna be celebrating Resurrection Sunday here at Omega State International, and it is going to be powerful, and I promise you, you don't wanna miss it, okay? We're gonna be doing communion together, and that's gonna be a powerful time, as well as we're gonna have the kids' church and elementary age students doing a special performance. So don't miss it. Come on out, celebrate the Lord's uh, resurrection with us, and we want to see you next Tuesday. The semester for summer life groups is about to begin, and we are so excited and we want you to be involved. Okay, we're looking for life group leaders, so if you are interested in being a life group leader, we're going to want you to meet us next Tuesday after service for more details and information. Come out and see us. There's going to be no audience of one practice this Thursday because of Women's Ramp. So we're going to be rescheduling and readjusting the times that we meet, if you're part of audience of one, to Saturday and Sunday. So for more information about the times, when you guys are meeting, where you're meeting, we want you to contact Miss Connie for more information. But if you're part of Audience of One, we'll see you Saturday and Sunday. Thank you all so much for joining us this week. We are so honored and privileged that you would join us on a Tuesday night. We want to once again welcome you to the Ramp at OCI, and we'll see you again next week. All right, all right. So this weekend, we're going to have thousands of women in this place worshiping God. It, I'll tell you what, it's going to be on it's gonna be an amazing time for, for Women's Ramp. So for those of you that wanna volunteer, I hope you heard that. We're gonna be setting up lots of chairs tomorrow. Please, if you can come out and help us, and if you wanna volunteer, please let us know. And I'm just excited to know that this place is gonna be filled with, I mean, there's gonna be a war happening here. These mamas go after everything that's come after their family. It's going to be a great, great time. I know you ladies are looking forward to it. And actually, I'm just looking forward to the afterglow that happens when, you know, when it's all done here, right here at Ramp OCI. So God is going to be blessed. It's going to be a wonderful time. Remember, next week, our kids are going to be performing. I'm going to be preaching a special sermon on the resurrection of Christ. We're going to have Holy Communion, some special songs celebrating the resurrection. It's going to be a wonderful family time to be together. You don't want to miss that. And so we'll be looking for you next week. So I know that you're ready for another song or two. You know, when Lindell says one, we never know how many that is. Anybody ready for more? Yeah. All right, before you go home, you're ready to go home with a little joy in your feet? Yeah, then stand on. up one more time, everybody, all over this room. And let's let them know one more time, because after this, they're going to be selling you some coffee. We're going to be getting them back on. they got to drive all the way home tonight. So I want you to just one more time tell them how much you appreciate them driving all the way down from Nashville to be a part of this service tonight. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to offer Holy One I'm humbled by all that you've done Even though I walk through the valley I don't have to fear no, no, no
Joy that you bring, joy that you bring. Revive me, revive me with joy that you bring, joy that you bring. Amen. Listen, there's one more announcement that someone asked me, and I didn't know the answer, so we just had to make an executive decision. We usually have prayer on Thursday night, but that's also when women's ramp is going to be here, and a lot of our people that come for prayer is going to be here working, so we will not be having prayer at, at ISO on Thursday this week, okay? So we just take a week off because a lot of our people that pray and a lot, all the women, we could have a men's prayer meeting over there, but a lot of men are also, I mean, you think the men need a prayer meeting, right? So all the women said amen. Now, we always have a good group of men there, but a lot of them are actually working this conference as well. So because so many people are working, it's gonna be a busy weekend, we're just gonna take that one night off, and so we'll pick back up next week, all right? God bless you, I love you, let me bless you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name and expect great things. Amen. God bless you.